Mama and welcome to my book journey. Today I am finally film getting around to filming my um, September wrap up video and I just I had a lot of good books that I read this month or last month and for September and first of all I just want to thank Cheryl at, from Candlewick Library for inviting me to participate as a co-host for her readathon that she did first for the first time this year for the first time she did her back to hogwarts readathon and i was really happy to be a part of that along with lucy and christy and angie and we just had a fun time together doing some sprints and just chatting all month long about the readathon and how we were all doing and so i was just going to go through my uh, all the books that I read and I did complete my my bingo board and so I was happy about that so I just wanted to go through with you all today and tell you about the books that I read and you know which ones were good as far as um, good reads for me and what I thought about it so we'll get started okay so I what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go down and do each little square that and uh, that that Cheryl gave us for the readathon, and I was team or not team. I was in Huffle Hufflepuff was the the what did they call them? The school or the group? Is it the school? Or, oh, terrible. Um, the the group, the school that they the kids all get. Oh, I'm so terrible so terrible I should edit this out but I'm just gonna let it go I'm just gonna let it go and I even read the first book so you would think I would know it by now anyway so um, I'm gonna start with the first one so the first one that she had for us for first prompt for our readathon was the Philosopher's Stone and that is read a book that has a found family or boarding school and so for that book for that prompt I read the edge of belonging and this is by Amanda Cox. And I this one is for a found family. And this book was so good. It was so good. I have I've had it on my shelf for a long time and I finally got around to reading it. And this also was my book for Oshina's Christian Romance Readathon. And this was fulfilled the prompt for a fall cover, like a fall story. And it does some of the book does take place in the fall. So, which was nice. So, what this book is about is, hold on one moment. Okay. So, what it, this book is about is, this is a story about a young girl named Ivy. And her, she had just um, gotten noticed that her grandmother had passed away. And so, which was really, you know, sad because she was really close with her grandmother. And when she went down to, um, to the funeral and um, everything was, was really a hard time in her life because she was also having an issue with her fiance. And so she was having a hard time and then plus her grandmother passed away. And then when she got back into town, she uh, got a letter from her grandmother like two weeks after the funeral. And it was a letter that the grandmother had had for her saying there were things that she wished she would have told Ivy when she was alive. And so there were some family secrets that her mother or grandmother wanted to share with her. So she went back to her hometown or where her grandmother lived to um, get all her grandmother's things out of the house. And the grandmother had left instructions about what her, her things, where she wanted them to go. And so the book is during this happens, takes place during this time that Ivy is, is learning about herself and her the and what her grandmother wanted to her to know ivy was adopted and all through her life she always asked her parents about her you know her adoption or her parents were and they never really told her so she didn't know and so she assumed that whatever her grandmother was going to reveal to her had to had to do with her real parents and it, it was and so and this book is written written and it's a two timelines so we have a past in the past we go back and forth between uh, a homeless man back in the early 90s he 
was living, he was homeless, living next to a highway and he come, he comes across a baby, newly born baby girl and he takes, uh, takes her and doesn't want to abandon her and proceeds to try to do his best to, to take care of her and he's homeless. And so it's there, that story. And as you're reading it, you realize that this baby is Ivy. And, but how is, how is his story going to connect to her story and how that all works out is, is really a really good story. Uh, there was a, a, a little bit of a romance in, in this as well between Ivy and a friend that she grew up with uh, as a child and, and kind of gets reacquainted with when she is back for her grandmother's funeral. I gave this uh, four stars. This was my first book by Amanda Cox and I will definitely uh, read some more from her. Okay, so the next uh, prompt for the readathon was Chamber, the book for Chamber of Secrets and it's read a book that has a secret in the title or in the plot. And so for that one I read Secrets of a Charmed Life by Susan Meisner. And this is also counted for Chantel Reads All Day. Her prompt for October was read a, a, histor a book, a historical fiction. And so that counted for that one as well. And so this book, I just love this book. This was a five-star read for me. And this was set in, I have to stop and think because this is, I think, one of the first books I read in the month of September. And it is... Ah, uh, let's see. Let me try to remind myself. This was about two sisters. That's right. This was about um, two sisters that were living in um, in London during the. This takes place during the Blitz, and so we find the story opens with a. It had a really good opening. Had a great opening. There was a girl, a young girl, um, and she was in at Oxford, and she was uh, an American, but she was there doing like um, going to school. And one of her things that she was doing at the end of before she went back to the states was she was going to do a report or an interview of somebody that lived during World War II. And the person she was going to interview or had planned to interview had passed away. And so her, her professor said, hey, I know somebody, a friend of the family that grew up during that time period. And I'll reach out to her and see if she's open to having you interview her. And of course she said she would. And it was a surprise to the family really because this woman in all the years, she had never spoke to anyone about her experience in well, during World War II and never did any interviews or anything. So they were all surprised that she agreed to it. And she was, <clears throat> so on her 93rd birthday, I think she was 93rd birthday, she invited the, the, the young girl over to her, play, to her home to do this interview. And I'll just read you this. Um, you know, she kind of chit chats with the woman and everything. And then, um, it's just the, the, the woman and the young girl that's doing the interview and her, her family, she kind of shooed her, her, her niece out of the, out of the room, you know, just, you know, just leave us alone for the interview. And so as soon as the niece left, the woman, um, kind of got close to her and, and paused and she said, okay, she says, well, first off, I'm not 93 and my name's not Isabel. And that was like, oh, okay. So the whole, so the book is about her telling her story to this uh, young woman, Kendra, and the story is two young girls that, two sisters that their mother, it was during the time right before the bombs were going to, that were going to drop bombs, uh, Hitler was going to drop bombs or the Germans were going to drop bombs in London, and so all the children had to leave, you know, they sent him off to the countryside. And so these two girls, uh, one was 15, the oldest was 15 and the youngest was like think, six, five or six. And so they had to be sent off, even though the 15 year old did not want to go on the train because she 
felt like she should have been treated as an adult and the 15 was like the cutoff really. And so, and also the mother didn't want to send her six year old daughter alone to the countryside. She's like, you have to go with your sister. And the, the oldest sister at the time she was getting a, she was so close to getting an opportunity to um, work at a, a bridal shop that made dresses because that was one of her dreams to be a designer of wedding dresses. And so uh, that's all I'm gonna say about this book. It, it follows her whole experience about what happened and it's it's such a you know the they the like I said how she says you know I'm not my name is not Isabel I'm not 93 years old and let me tell you this sto this story and it's just heartbreaking really and Suzanne Meisner Susan Meisner is one of my favorite historical fiction writers and this one was it was so good I just loved the story of between the sisters and then what happens to what happens to them all and the things that she finds out as she's growing up and you know what happens the night of the blitz it's just it's just an amazing story so this is um a five-star read and that counted for the second prompt okay so i need to move it right along i think i'm getting too long on my descriptions okay the third prompt was Prisoner of Azkaban, read a book with an animal on the cover. And so for that one, I read this book, Animal Farm by um, George Orwell. And this was so good. I had heard about it, but I had never read it before. And after I read it, uh, Ellie, my daughter and I re watched a movie on YouTube. They did like a little adaptation and my daughter was like, oh my goodness, she, she enjoyed it too this book actually counted is going to count for two of my prompts um i also counted this for um order of the phoenix and that is read a book that has an uprising so this counted as an uprising and also as a animal on the cover so the the story of the animal farm is the animals uprising against their human <laughs> masters and what happens after they kick the farmer off the farmer out and then they take over and they start running the farm but but um somebody has to be in charge right well the pigs the pigs of the farm take charge and there's a little power struggle at the beginning between two of the pigs one is snowflake i think and one is um uh, Napoleon of course and Napoleon kind of kicks out gets rid of Snowflake and he takes over and he just basically becomes a dictator and what I really loved about the the book and we m my daughter Ellie and I really talked about it a lot um, while we were reading it and the animals some of the animals learned how to read the pigs learned how to read and they wrote laws for themselves and during the course now now some animals could read the laws and they wrote like the laws on the the side of the barn painting them and some animals could read them but a lot of them couldn't read them and so during the course of the story um they start changing these laws and then the animals were like wait a minute didn't the law used to be this and they're like oh no 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 look it says it right here and since they couldn't read they're like oh okay and there was a a one pig I think his name was Squealer and he was kind of in charge of he was like the propagandist he would go and try to tell the animals like with the laws and how every the things that were changing oh no no this is how it is this is how you know and the animals were like okay you're not going along with it even though they were seeing things that weren't right they were hearing things that weren't right but the pigs were telling them no you just have to follow in line and, and and do what we say basically so it's a really good book it's a the author wrote it and kind of showing how governments can be with people and in power and just be told dictators to these um to these to these animals and the funny thing at the very end is the the pigs started living in the home of the the in the home of the the farmer 
and wearing clothes and which was one of the laws you know animals don't wear clothes and drinking and and they were becoming what they didn't despise basically is what the other animals thought but they just you know the pigs just wanted to take rule everybody, everybody else so all the other animals it was a really good book i really enjoyed it um this book had came with other because it was like a, a literature book with similar stories uh and i'll just talk about this one that was really interesting in here it was called the other story in this book that i thought was pretty interesting was harrison bergeron this name is a little it's a little short story by kurt von vonnegut vonnegut jr and this one was so interesting it was like a this future little tale about the year 2081 and in this um society uh, they wanted everybody to be equal totally equal and um <laughs> and they had made all these amendments that they put into effect and they had at this point in time they had 213 amendments and we've been going through the the constitution right now and right now we only have 27 amendments did you know that we only we have 27 amendments but in this short story in the year 2081 they had up to 213 amendments it's kind of scary but anyway the the story the short story is about like i said everybody has to be equal and say you are more intelligent you know you're more intelligent than some they they focused on a couple and the husband i think was a little bit more intelligent than average than normal <clears throat> so he had to wear a little what they called a little mental handicap radio radio in his ear and when he somehow it's it knew when he was doing something over and above and he would get he would lose parts of his memory or his zap his brain or something to you know keep him in line with everybody else and then people that were uh um beautiful they would make them wear uh things on their faces to to sh to make them even with everybody else like a a, a red nose or a mess a ba practically bags over their heads or something just to keep them all even and they did the thing with sport everything was it was to the to the ridiculous you know and it's just Kind of scary because you know sometimes in our society today they try to make everybody equal when it like equal as far as in terms of outcome like we all do the same things i mean and that's not true everybody's different you know and this <laughs> this book was really like trying to make everybody equal equal to the extreme is it was a funny kind of scary but funny story anyway that was a side, a little extra, a little extra, extra book for you. Okay, the fourth um, prompt for the readathon was Goblet of Fire, and that was read a book that had like a school spirit or a competition, and that was the last book I read of the month, and it was this book called Red Rising by Pierce Brown, and this book has a competition throughout it, kind of like a really intense Hunger Games, but even more so, very dark and a lot of violence this book has had a lot of violence this book has seven um books in the series i think the seventh book doesn't come out till next year so my husband um uh, listened to this one on audio i ended up listening to most of it on audio as well but he finished it really quick and then he's actually on book three right now so after he read the first one he told me you need to read it too you need to read it too it's really good and so I said, okay, I will read it for my competition um, prompt. And I didn't like it as much as he did. And I think it was because of all the violence. It was very, it was very an action filled book. And just, um, I don't know, it just didn't, I didn't connect with it very well. And it was a lot of language and just a lot of bad stuff that happened to this poor guy. The premise of the book is it takes place in the future and we have, a, they are uh, in on Mars, <clears throat> the planet Mars, and our main character is named Darrow, and he's about, I think, 17, maybe 17 years old, he's a young guy, and he works 
they work below the surface of Mars to, um, they're down there drilling for, drilling for, I can't remember what they're drilling for, but it's something to help to have so that people can live on t on Mars with the atmosphere and everything. Oh, I'm trying to think what that name is. If I remember, I'll put it right here. But anyway, and they're basically slaves. And at this point in time in history, they have, the human race has separated into basically like caste systems and they go by colors. And he's in the, he's a, what they consider a red, which is the lowest of the low. And they're basically, like I said, they're basically slaves working every day and getting very little. And they don't ever see the surface of the, of the planet. They're just below and they've been down there for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, down in Mars just working and the top tier humans are golds and they are they rule and so what this book is about is an uprising against the gold um, humans that are basically telling people that they're God they're the gods now and so it's a very interesting story of how he he is going to um, try to overturn or upset the societal norms and how he's able to do that is that part I did enjoy and I won't say anything because that's a big big spoiler of how he does that but uh, after he he gets um, the competition part is after he he rises up in a way but and not <laughs> it's it's really an interesting um, book about how he does that and like I said there's seven books on it there's seven books so it's one of these and this one wasn't that long but this book only got the very the very first part of you know his journey of and like I said he's 17 years old um, when this book starts I believe so there's a really sad um, part about him because he's actually married already but something happens to his wife and that really kind of lights the the fire for him to do what he does so that is I gave this book a three only because I didn't enjoy the language and all the the fighting and it was pretty brutal and it was pretty and they really you know um, exp not explained but really um, the brutality that was described it was very descriptive of all the brutality and everything so i gave it a three um my husband like i said my husband's still reading it reading the books he is going to keep on going and so i told him i'll read the first one and then you can just tell me what happens <laughs> just tell me what happens and then i won't have to read the rest of the books okay so there's that one and then we have our um center our center part our, our center part our center box is HP and that was read a book that has HP or read a Harry Potter, Harry Potter book and for that one I did the Sorcerer's Stone and I did a vlog on that and I'll link that below where I talked about what I felt about this book how I felt about reading it because it was my first time reading a Harry Potter book and I really enjoyed it um, I had re already seen all the movies so I kind of knew what was coming but it was it was fun to finally you know say hey you know I have read a Harry Potter book <laughs> I um and then I have the second book and I don't don't know when I'll get around to to reading it, but hopefully I'll, you know, read the next one. So then the next square is Order of the Phoenix, read a book. Oh, I already did that one, Secret Society or Uprising, and that was The Animal Farm. And then the next one is The Half-Blood Prince, and that is read a number, read a book that has a number on the cover or a battle. And actually Red Rising could have caught counted for that one because that was a battle there was battles all through that though that book but for that one I read the first 15 lives of Harry August and this book I gave it five stars because it was so interesting it was so interesting and uh, I had to take notes and of course I don't have them I should have brought them with me but this is a story about a man that lives his life over and over and over again in time he he will live he will live his life he lives his first life and then 
when he dies at a you know very old age he wakes up and he's born again and he's born back in his life in the same place that he was born the first time to the same parents he was born in the first time and he just continues doing this every time he dies he kind of like a reboots back to his life and he does change things he doesn't live the exact same life he does he he changes um like what he does in each life but he doesn't change history or like he doesn't he has rules that he doesn't um change try to change the course of history in other words but he can change his history as far as like if in a one life he marries somebody in another life he marries somebody else you know that kind of thing and at first i thought that was going to be what the story was about like it's just going through his his lives but it really wasn't the story was about him trying to stop something from happening and the whole the whole premise was really interesting because he wasn't the only one that did this there was other people that also had um many lives and they kind of meet each other and have clubs around the world that that connect with each other and because they are living uh, many lives they can go back in time as far as inf give information to people that lived in the past and in the future if that makes sense they because and the, re the way they're able to do that is that when they go back in time or when they're reborn they have uh, memories of their past lives they don't remember every single thing but they know that they lived before so they know that they're coming back and so he but he is different he's special because um, not only does he remember that he's had these previous lives but he remembers everything every memory with detail and not all of these kind of people have that but he does and so the book is written in such a way and it's not a linear book i mean because he goes back and forth between the diff different lives and and how um things affect him in life but like i said the what happens is that he he gets a message at one point in one of his lives and i can't remember what number it is but during one of his lives when he's in the hospital going you know on his um he's getting ready to die and a little girl comes up to his um hospital room and she's like oh dr august you know i thought i was gonna miss you and she's like i have a message for you that you need to take you know back to your clubs and and give them this message and the message was that the world was ending and so he has to figure out you know how what's making the world end and to try to stop it from happening so it was so good it's it's hard to explain but that kind of is the gist of it he's he is not only is he telling in the book he's talking about his life and his life experiences and and how everything's changed and and the people that he's met and who are important to him but he's also on a mission to to find out why the world is ending sooner and how to stop it and so that's like i said i gave it five stars there is um a lot there is some language in here and that is you know this is not a christian fiction book it's a secular fantasy sci-fi book and it, so there is some language in it and there is some um descriptive like torture that happened to him at one point in his life which is pretty bad so you know if that kind of thing bothers you i wouldn't i would kind of pass this up but if you like um sci-fi kind of fan fantasy time kind of books you might enjoy this one so and that one's by claire north all right okay so then the the last book um, prompt was deathly hollows read a book that has a quest or a journey and for that one i read this uh, middle grade book called where the mountain meets the moon and this one's by grace lynn and this one was such a cute book it was really good and the reason i loved it it had all these like folklore stories that were told throughout the throughout the book and they all kind of interwoven they were interwoven with each other they all they all um 
Like I said, they were told at different points, but they all weave together really well in the story. And the story is about a young girl named, oh, let's see, what was her name? Her name is Min Lee, and she wants to, she lives on the side of a mountain that is there, they have a lot of drought and their, her family's really poor and she wants to bring um, some kind of blessing or something good to her family or um, not riches, but just uh, to change the area where she's living. And she gets told by somebody that if she goes and talks to or, or meets the man on the moon or the moon meets the I think that the man of the, the old man of the moon and ask him um, he will be able to tell her how she can get her wish kind of like you know you know go to the uh, with the Wizard of Oz and he'll give you your wish kind of that kind of thing but she she was going to journey to find him and she leaves home and she's just a little girl and her parents you know of course are you know, wondering what happened to her and, and the, the mother is upset with the dad because he's like, you put all these stories into her head to make her think, you know, that she could do this. And so she was the, so you have the story of the, the girl going on her, her journey. And also you have a back, you know, back and forth between what the parents are doing as they're waiting for her and their relationship. And then, like I said, there's all these stories that are being told that's kind of like the backdrop of of the old man and uh, the moon. And then there's a dragon that she meets along the way. And he's very important too to the story. It's really good. Like I said, it's a middle grade book. I really enjoyed this. I gave this, I think four stars is what I gave this one. Okay. And then the last prompt that she gave was a Cursed Child was, and that was to a watch an adaption or play a game. And so I did watch, I think I watched um, the third book, Prisoner of Azkaban. It was on TV and I watched it. And then I also participated in the trivia game and did terrible. I just did, I think I got one question correct. And that was, we had a sprint the other night and we had trivia and it was so much fun. But like I said, I was terrible. Cheryl and Christy and, and Lucy, they all were getting all the answers. But uh, like I said, I got one, <laughs> so that was pretty good. Okay, let's see. I think I have one more. I have two more books that I want to talk about that I also read this month. Um, these are part of my uh, read it read alouds that I do with my daughter, and I count them as part of my reading. Um, this one is called Tolliver's Secret, and that one counted for it was like a double one because I had secret in the title. And this is about a young girl, and I really enjoyed this one. I enjoyed both both of these books. This is set during the Revolutionary War, and this young girl named Ellen, her grandfather is kind of a spy, you know, and he um, is getting ready to to take a real secret message that needs to get to like Washington, um, George Washington, and but he falls down and hurts his leg, and he can't. Uh, I think he breaks his ankle or something. And so he can't take the message. So she, you know, she's just a little girl, says, hey, Grandpa, I'll do it for you. And what the message is, is they baked a, a snuff box with the message inside into a, a loaf of bread. And so she's got that little bundle here in the picture. But I mean, this little girl, she goes, she has to get in a boat and go across uh, the river to the next town and you know, and it's all in one day. And my daughter's like, this happened, you know, cause we read it over a while. And she's like, that all happened in one day. I'm like, yeah, cause she was supposed to go and go to a specific town and then um, give this bread to a, a friend of the dad, you know, dad secretly or the grandpa secretly and then come right back. Well, it doesn't go as easily as that. She has some difficulties along the way, but, and that's what the story is about. It's so good. I really enjoyed reading that one. So that one was Tolliver's Secret. And then the other one, we just finished that uh, here. This one we just finished just recently. And this one's called Justin Morgan Had a Horse. And this is also during kind of like a little bit past that time period where a young boy named Joel and this man, Justin Morgan, and he was a school teacher. 
are uh, walking <clears throat> to uh, uh, several miles to a, a town outside of where they live because the, the school teacher is, he needs to pay some debts and he goes to a farmer that owes him money. And the farmer's like, I don't have any money, but I can give you these two horses. And one of them is a nice big horse. And then uh, one of them is a real little colt. And Joel loves, falls in love with this little colt. And he calls him Little Bub. And for being a little colt, he's pretty strong. He's a strong horse. He can pull a, a lot compared to other horses. And then he's also fast. So in this, in this story, you see him doing pulling contests and you see him in a race against like thoroughbreds. And the little boy uh, is, like I said, he really loves this horse. And this is the story of that horse and that Justin Morgan, the school teacher, and then the, the boy, Joel. And then when we finished reading the book, uh, I can't remember, I, my daughter looked it up, I think. Yeah, she looked it up and she goes, hey mom, that is real guy and our, and the horse, now they have a breeds of horses that are called Morgans and it's because of this story, this, um, this, this horse, the legend, you know, and that, that be, this horse, they were, they bred other horses and, and they're called Morgans now and they're like the, um, I think, the, I don't know, I think they were the oldest bred horses here in, in America. I think that's right. So we went and looked, we looked it up on, on uh, watched a couple videos about it. So that was really interesting. I didn't, you know, when I was reading that, I didn't know, realize it was uh, based on a true story with this. And then there, I, I also saw there's a Disney movie, or not a movie, but a, like a TV show they had about Justin Morgan. So we might have to look that up at some point and, and watch it. Okay, I think that is it. That's all of them. So those are all the books that I read for the month of September and um, I was happy to get all the the um, prompts done. So for my for my for my five reading challenges, Chantel's was The Secrets of a Charmed Life. Katie's was that was funny. Katie's was um, the one with the dragon <laughs> because her prompt was read a book that has a something that you would get as a souvenir and I picked the the dragon so that counted for that and then um Oshina's was the edge of belonging for that uh romance that happened in this book Christian fiction and then Jane Reads hers was hers was uh, oh hers was this one too Hers, this one did triple duty. So she, this one was Oshina's. I counted it for Oshina's. And then I ended up counting it because I was going to read a different book for, for Jane's, but I ran out of time. But hers was read a book that has a duplicate le letters. And this one has a ton of E's, you know. So I counted it as for her Christian fiction. For her Christian fiction book. And then for Angie Book Mama, hers was read a book um where is hers at her prop for september was a book just from your shelf and i just did the harry potter for that one and so that's it that is all i had it like i said i had a really good time with cheryl and the other gals reading um for the readathon and completing all the prompts and it was a lot of fun and so uh, let me know in the comments below if you participated in the hair, the um, Back to Hogwarts readathon with us and let me know if you, did you get all the prompts? Did you read some really good books? And, or if you read any of the books that I've read here, let me know what, what your thoughts or feelings were. And um, that is it. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for hanging out and you all have a blessed day.